Hello, happy Friday. Um, we did not have uh, an interview last week. It got canceled. But, oh, glory to God. I just wanted to come up here quickly. And because a friend of mine picked up the book. I do have one of these books closer every time that I'm doing a, a video. A friend of mine picked up actually two. She bought one for herself and one just to give away as a blessing so it into another person's life. Whoever needs it, which I really appreciate. Like, I think in this season, I'm really grateful for the community that I have and people surrounding me. But she had this amazing review on my personal page um, at Noella of Fury. And... I posted it on this page. I kind of recorded the story and posted it on this so you guys can understand. And she was, she read the back and talked about um, basically the short um, introduction of the book. And at the end of her story, she said, a godly character is what matters. And I want to point that out because that's basically what I was trying to portray in this book. My background in prayer, because again, my dad, I don't think a lot of people know this, but my parents are pastors. I did say that in the book. I grew up in Nigeria, spent 15 years of my life there. And so the culture is different. And my dad is also, or was also a deliverance pastor. So it was a lot of seeing like people, demons speak through people. Um, yeah, I feel like because of the experience I had, I've had, like nobody can tell me that God isn't real. <laughs> but again, it was always, where prayer was always like a defense tool. It was, we were always like coming at it from a, defensive side like the bind the cast like i say at the back of the book and as i started to grow and have my own and kind of trying to figure out my own prayer relationship and communication with god my heavenly father um that's basically how this book was birthed and i wrote this book in a year published it and all that stuff edited but i feel like it had it was a journey. It all these things that you're seeing in here, even if um, they might sound um, very new, it's been a journey trying to figure out my prayer style and how I communicate with God better, and not just go off my parents, um, what I learned from them, and also I'm not trying to like shun that. Like I write in the book, I still pray those prayers because of course. Um, the um demons are real um we, we are this is september next month is october they're gonna i live in salem which is like the halloween center and things like that are real we need to be the bible talks about not being ignorant of the devices of the wicked like we do not wrestle against flesh and blood so there is that part of prayer of deliverance prayer of intercessory prayer of of um deliverance prayer and I'm not shunning that and I'm not shunning the churches that um, really, that is like their focus. Because I know there are some churches that that is their focus. Um, for example, the church where I call home, Calvary Christian Church in Linfield, Mass, it's a mission-focused church. So again, every church has a different focus. And I'm not shunning that. But back to what my friend Hillary was saying building a godly character is what matters most and what i noticed um as a pk growing in church i was seeing a lot of people that were focused on the devil and not focused on themselves and so they were neglecting the soul care um, I don't remember the scripture, but the Bible says, I wish that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Now, what is your soul made of? Vu's church has this, and it was, um, they talked about, I think they had the series where they talked about soul care. And he talked about how your soul 
um, is a combination of your heart, your will, your emotions, your relationships. And I just talked about how I just feel loved so much like this morning in my prayer time. I was just thanking God for the community. I could not explain how much it means to me because I really didn't have this growing up. I was more alienated. And it talks about back to soul care. And I feel like just with my experience growing up in church, that certain of church, again, every church is different. Um, it's like people neglect their soul care. They neglect their um, how their past, their trauma, how the dead of a family or frustration or disappointment actually affects them. And so this, basically, my prayer journey has been just getting back to the basics of God, you are my heavenly father and you want the best for me. Like really looking at God as my heavenly father, not as someone that is angry like basically that's how I go like God is angry at you. You should not do this. You should not do that. This is wrong. This is bad. Like Old Testament God. And now looking at the New Testament God. And both of them is good. Like we're not tr trashing the Old Testament. I love it. If I, <laughs> I read more Old Testament than I do New Testament. But getting into an understanding of God is love. Like I was in my prayer time today, like the scripture came back to me. Even if I make my bed in Hades, God is still there. Like it, sh it shows the matchless extravagant love of God. And that's something like I really did not understand growing up. And I'm not saying that is a fault of my parents. No, I think they did their best. And I'm really grateful for the spiritual foundation they gave to me and my siblings um because i know and i see a lot of people that struggle now in their um adulthood that because they didn't have that and so it is just i have a a, a shirt on my website that the front says the fruit of the spirit and at the back it lists the fruit of the spirit love joy um patience humility um, long suffering, kindness, gentleness, meekness. Those are the things that our soul needs that we need to start asking the Holy Spirit to really work on us. I feel like if we really focus on, even if it's the remainder of this um, month, not even of this month, of this year, go through this book, really think about your prayer life. Like, I don't want to live in fear about things that are going to happen to me or demons, everything. Yes, I have authority. I have the name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every name. Yeah, I will say all of that. I will bind. I will cast. I will take authority. But once that is done, that is done. I need to focus more of God, make me over again. Make me into the person you want me to be. Develop the patience that I need develop um bridle my tongue make my words edify um my thought life like i feel like if we really stop trying to do this defensive stuff the lord <laughs> i love the scripture the lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace let god fight for you he's already doing the battle there's really nothing much you can do but really focus i'm not saying ignore all of that the other prayers there are a lot of people that, again, seasons of their life, they actually need deliverance from things. But I found even when God delivered me from masturbation, sexual immorality, all those things that were holding me bound, it wasn't praying, bite my fire, cast the devil prayers. And I'm not shutting that again. Everybody is different and every situation is different. I, I know their powers. But... We should really stop focusing on that and look at Jesus. Hebrews say, looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I feel like we make our problems and we make the devil so bigger than the power and the authority that we have. Um, 
And so just really getting back to God, make me over again, make me into a better person. And how do we do that? By spending time in prayer and figuring out our prayer style and just worshiping and getting into the word and try asking God. Like, I feel like sometimes we just box God and he's bigger than that. God, help me see you in another way that I haven't seen you. How about you pray that? Help me know you in another way that I haven't known you. Um, This is how I was brought up. This is how I was taught. But there's more to you. I know there's more. So show me. And again, back to that godly character. I feel like that's the way we are going to win um, souls. Because if we just keep doing things from the defensive i also think that's selfish prayers (laughs) i really think it's selfish but when you now turn into god make me better so the person that i speak to the next person that i engage with will feel the love of christ through me is is a prayer that i want to keep praying i want to grow i want to thrive i want to grow that's basically what Noel's nuggets here we we're looking at one of tribe and growing every area god take me deeper i want to know more about prayer so i just want to come up and say that i have copies of the book if you live in the north shore area or even if you don't live in the north shore area like i can i just had another um person fill out the form that lives in everett so we are going to meet and, and give out the book um you can buy one for yourself and also buy another for another person. The books are really going out quick. Um, so I do appreciate all the people that have bought. If you don't leave clothes, buy. Um, I did have to ship one to another friend of mine in Attleboro. Because I just, it was far. Um, but around Lowell, I, because I go to school there, I can definitely um, give that in person. But if you live very far away from me, it's on Amazon. So there's no excuse. You can either get the um, ebook or you can get the um, personal copy, the physical copy. I do um, suggest the pers- the physical copy because, again, it has sections where you can write. I mean, you can have a second um, book or even a journal where you can write why you answer the um prompts from the ebook but i love you guys so much let me leave you guys with a prayer i this morning i really enjoyed my prayer time with god and i my prayer time is always so different in devotion i'm gonna god has just been revealing a lot to me and i just haven't had time to record and share with you guys um but i just want to pray for you um heavenly father we just come before you today this is the day that you have made that we will rejoice and be glad in it it's a friday (laughs) you know people say it's fun day but i just remember i think you're taking my mind back to um easter and without a friday there would be no there would be no sunday without your death um there would be no resurrection and i just want to thank you for your blood that was shed for our sins i want to thank you because you you died so we can leave and you shed your blood to cleanse us from every sin sins of the past um sins of the present sins of the future and so we just surrender our life to you we give you our heart we say you can have it you can use it and we just ask that you move in us, move through us, change our mindset about things that that really isn't right or that needs to be better or improved on. Make us like you. Um, help us to to really study your word and grow deeper in you and learn more of you. And just because there's so much that we need to learn and. We just ask, Holy Spirit, that you be with us. We need you. We need your presence today. Go before us 
um, send your angels to go before us, make the crooked way straight. We pray for favor, we pray for healing. Um, whatever anyone is dealing with right now, we just ask that you touch your heart and that you comfort and you bring that knowledge that um, whatever they expect in Lord Jesus, that it will be done in your name. We pray and we commit the weekend into your hands and we just love you. We love you. We love you so much because you first loved us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Have a great weekend, y'all.